Story time! I had to fire a GC one time for one of my real estate flips, and I'm gonna tell you how and why I did it. Let's crush this. Hey, so we were just editing this video and I realized I was looking at the wrong camera, but it is so good. You have to pay attention and excuse me from looking at the wrong camera. Okay, go back. So one of the biggest fears that a lot of new investors have when doing real estate rehabs is, hey, what if I get a really bad contractor and I have to sever ties? How do I actually do it? So unfortunately, this actually happened to me. Oh my God, this contractor was awful. So remember in the past where I told you that I we used to do cohorts through the Better Than Success Real Estate League and I would never do it again? Our second cohort, we actually was doing a flip and I was pretty much running a point on the whole entire project. We ended up voting to hire this GC that, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't, I wasn't opposed to him. I actually had my GC license at the time, but the whole idea was to get, allow everybody to have experience with working with another GC. So when we hired him, I told him, hey, listen, you know, you're gonna be the GC, I'm gonna let you do everything, but if you run across any issues or are curious about anything about permitting, just let me know because I am a GC too, so I can either help you or I can pull whatever you can't pull. But so just let letting you know, because in Philadelphia where I invest, permitting is really complex and it may be really complex where you live as well. And so someone's ability to be a GC, like actually run a project, if someone doesn't really fully understand the permitting process, that doesn't mean they're a bad GC because they may have been working under another GC who handle all of that stuff, but they know how to project me. So I was kind of giving him some leeway there, like, hey, just let me know. And so what ended up happening was this particular GC and his team, they kept uh, changing deadlines. So we had to have a lot of work orders. Now, let me go back and tell you, we did have a contract in place that laid out the actual timeline for the project. And so they kept asking for more money and they kept making change orders and they kept missing deadlines. And so, um, it got to a point where it was like, you guys are just doing a really, really, really bad job. Now it's important also to understand that Again, every municipality works differently, but in Philadelphia, and I'm sure a lot of municipalities, when the GC goes to pull the permits that allows them to actually work on the project, the permit is tied to the GC. So you as an investor, you are the developer, you're the investor, and you hire the GC and they pull permits on behalf of the project, right? So if you fire them, you can't just say, hey, go on about your business and think you just can pick up with another GC. You can't, something has to be done about that permit. So what we essentially ended up doing was making sure that we followed to the T in terms of once I, like we got into an all out shouting match. It was crazy. Actually it wasn't really crazy. Like he said something really disrespectful to someone that was close to me at the time. And I just didn't like it. And I just, <laughs> I went off. And I was like, okay, you, you, you absolutely got to go. According to the contract was made. Like sometimes when you're in contracts with people, even if they do a bad job, it may be of benefit to you both time and financial resources wise to just make sure that they are whole so that they're, they're not trying to argue with you and hold anything hostage. Right. So let's say for instance, um, now again, when you have these contracts, you need to have these stop marks for the GC not saying like, Hey, I'm going to give you 50% and then 50% when it's done. When you're talking about a real estate project, that's possibly a hundred thousand dollars. You don't want to do $50,000 and $50,000 because that's just so many opportunities for you to be out of your pocket more than the amount of work that they did. So you want to have these pit stops like, okay, here's phase one. Phase one comprises of, you know, demo and um, roofing. Phase two is windows and framing, so on and so forth, so that you're never too much 
out of pocket more than the work that they're doing. At any given moment, you have eight phases. If you do it this way, you're never that far off. So let's say they're, they've done $5,000 worth of work more than what I've paid. It may be a benefit to you to just pay it versus going back and forth, installing your project for five and six months. And five and six months can be more than the $5,000. Think about that. And then maybe take them to court later to get your money back. Luckily, we were not out of pocket more the work that they did. And so we just said, hey, go on about your business. This is what the contract says. You cool? I know we don't like each other. I'm cool going about your business. Now let's talk about severing ties in terms of the permit. In Philadelphia, what I had to do was get a notarized document that says, hi, I, Nicole Purvey, of the, am the owner of this LLC, which also owns this property. And I want to take this GC off of permit number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Take that document, get it notarized, and take it to the local LNI department or your main LNI department, and they can do it right there as long as it's notarized. And then that's literally it. The biggest issue is just making sure that your contract doesn't allow for you to be more financially outlaid at any given phase than you are comfortable with. Here's another hack make sure that you separate materials from labor because your GC will probably pad on a little bit on the materials. So you pay for the, the materials yourself and then you pay your GC for labor, okay? All right, so I have a checklist for you if you wanna become your own GC, right? So when I fire this person, I say, you know what, I'm just gonna be the GC. <laughs> I'll be the GC on record. Like I'm a GC, I should've just did it in the beginning. Like, so there's that. But um, you may just wanna be your own GC forever and ever and ever. And so you just really don't have to deal with this on this level anymore. So I have a spreadsheet for you, a checklist for how you become a GC in Philadelphia and 22 other major cities. It gives you all the resources, 22 other major cities in the US. So download this spreadsheet, subscribe to the channel. And until next time, landlords, make a bunch of money.